So yeah, recording now. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen because I don't know if people are going to be joining on Zoom. I thought somebody said they would, but regardless, again, if you feel ill, just simply, you know, uh, join via Zoom. If you are, um, so I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, hopefully you've had a chance to maybe look at the, at the second assignment now, maybe look at it. Um, so if you haven't had the chance to do so to um, if you haven't had the chance to do so yet, please watch the array list lecture videos, right? You should try to watch each module basically uh, before you come to class each week. So the array list videos, if you, if you haven't had the chance to watch that, that's fine. The key things to the, that will be different here is lists and de dealing with generics. You'll get the general gist of it from the first from the first three minute video that we see here, right? Um, so just keep keep that in mind. We'll we'll the first three minutes should cover that fairly. Um, you know that that should cover uh, cover the very basic bits of generics. But I will set up the first method for you guys if you need to. Uh, so if you want to see that. But with that said, let's take a look at this week's assignment, which we'll be working on today and on Thursday. On Thursday, I will be presenting the, what I consider to be the most difficult assignment in uh in, in for this week. So this this basic so I'll give you the answer to that. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna go through these questions, but I'll give you the answer to one of them on Thursday. So you know, use today and tomorrow to try to work on that yourself. Okay. So this is one of your boring make work of uh, one of those standard boring make work homeworks. Uh, so I don't get to do a very interesting one all the time. At least next time I'll be able to deal with, um, we'll be able at least next assignment, even though it's a math assignment next week, that will be at least have some interesting puzzles to look at. So there is that. All right, so in this exercise, you will learn to write stack methods that use lists and strings. So here we want you to do static methods. Also, you're going to be using lists and array lists. Now, I know that you all learned how to use lists and the basics of using lists and array lists in 1068, or you should have. That said, this assumes you didn't. Okay, so so my videos assume that you've never had exposure to array lists because, of course, you know, curriculum differences between different universities and transfer students do occur. So um, also, you know, could have been months and you could have completely forgotten all that. So um, <clears throat> Now, this homework's important to do for the ne next one because your answers on this homework will be used when we do big O analysis on the next one, okay? So you'll be estimating how long the run times are. Now, if that seems scary, uh, there's only gonna be three different choices. It's gonna be either uh, N log N, which is very unlikely unless you do something very specific, O of N or O of N squared. So you have only one through three choices. Uh, for the next homework, so don't get too scared about that. So um, the main di difficulty that students run into is how to write static generic methods, okay? So the idea behind generics is that basically is that you just don't say, hey, let's have a list of stuff. If you leave it untyped like it was in Java 5 and, oh, sorry, earlier than Java 5, they, the Java did not support generics. But generics are just super useful because they they they, it means that you don't have to cast. And uh, it also makes the language type safe. What do I mean? Well, for instance, over here, down here for a second, this is saying that it will take, that this method takes in a list of integers and only list of integers. It is only a list that contains ints. Remember, integer is the class type that, uh, that corresponds with ints, okay? If you try to pass this method of list a list of strings, it will give you an error, which means it will prevent you from accidentally doing that. Same with a list of doubles or a list of uh, objects. Any kind of list that isn't a list of integers, it will reject, which is great because now we can assume that list only has integers in it, which means we don't have to cast things from it, meaning we don't have to tell Java, hey, this thing coming out, it's not actually an object, it's re in reality an int. You know, you don't have to say that. It just knows because you told because the typing tells it. However, a lot of times we don't necessarily know what the type is going to be, so we want to use this. 
So where we say public static, ignore this part in between right now, Boolean in, and this is list of E's. So we're saying basically that this method over here, okay, is composed of a list. We're gonna call that type, and we're gonna call this type E. That's kind of like a variable. We're declaring a variable for like, the types that lists are going to hold. We don't know what it is, but we'll figure it. But we'll figure it out when it gets called. So it's a list of all the things of the same type. We're denoting that type E, and we're going to give it an E item. So the biggest mistake that I see students make, though, here, okay, is that like when you know what type you're going to be using, and I'll demonstrate this error to you in a bit, okay? Like over here, list of integers. They put the static, they put the generic type integer there, which has completely undesirable results. Specifically, what it does is that it completely uh, destroys uh, for the, the existence of that method, the existence of an integer type. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me boot, boot up IntelliJ. And so we'll take a look at the first couple of, and while that's booting up, let's take a look at the first uh, couple of, uh, of the first, we've got six methods the ones that you're gonna be doing this week. So first one, uniqueness, write a method called unique that takes in a list and returns true if all the items are unique. All the items are unique if none of them are the same. In other words, write the list one, two, three, four has unique items, but one, two, three, four, three has two threes in it, okay? Or for instance, A, B, C, B, that also, is not unique because it has a, se a second B in it. All multiples, write a method called all multiples, which takes in a list of integers and returns an int. A single, uh, sorry, sorry, takes in a list of integers and an int. It returns a new list of integers that contains all the numbers that were multiple. So if, in other words, if our input list is this, a bunch of numbers, and we give it five, it's going to give us 25, 5, 30, and 25, which are all the numbers in this initial list that were multiples of five. Reading the problem exp explains the problem here for some, a lot of them, which is fortunate. All strings of size, it's basically the same here, except we're doing dealing with the strings, and instead we're just filtering out the ones that are of a certain size. So 2.4. 2.4 is, is the most difficult one for this one because it is involves a really wonky nested for loop that you may not have had to use before. Um, there are multiple ways to do this one without using the nested for loop that reduce the runtime, but they require you use knowing more about Java than you would currently know. So if permutation, I will go over that one on Thursday, but please try to do that one on your own, okay? So that 2.4 will be a freebie, essentially. 2.5. A uh, string to list of words, given a string, convert it into a list of words. This one we don't have to be too fancy with. You can just split it up by spaces, like assume every word is separated by spaces and you can ignore punctuation. However, you do have an extra credit opportunity here, which is that if you want to uh, sanitize the screen, uh, strings and remove all that punctuation, that is worth five points of extra credit. So you could get a total of 105 on this assignment. And then finally, 2.6, which is not the most difficult, but is the trickiest. 2.6, given it's called remove all instances, given a uh, a list and a thing you want to remove all from it, such as five, you remove all the five, you remove all of that thing from it. So here we have one, four, five, six, five, five, two. We want to remove all fives, so we give it five, and then the list we don't return anything. The list just gets changed. To become one four six two. All the, so you will want to test this this uh, function explicitly on the input on the inputs I give to see if you get the matching output because your output may not be what you expect. All right. Rubric is over here, and be prepared to explain how remove all instances works, and that it works on the test case as well as being able to look at and we're going to just choose one more to explain these are easy enough that i can actually take a look at these you don't necessarily need to have a way to run uh you can i mean you want to test them 
but I mean, I'm able to tell if it's working just by looking at these. Um, these ones are pretty simple um, for me to look at, although they're hard to write. All right, so with that, let me go over how to um, how to write these. The first thing first, when we create a new project, right? I'm gonna call this um, array list, and I'm not gonna call it array list as my project. That would be terrible. I'm gonna call it array list uh, 2022 as my project. Open it in this window, and again. Over here, I'm when I create a new file by going to my source folder and creating a new Java file or however you need to do it in your environment that you're using. Again, I don't care what environment. I'm in. But over here, I'm not going to call it array list. Don't call it array list or list. Maybe call it array list homework. But you don't want to call it like a list or array list because then Java's going to think this is the array list class. Sorry, the IDE and Java will think, hey, this is the array list class. So when you say to use an array list, I'm going to look in this class to find all the stuff I need. So when you try to add stuff to an array list, it's going to say, hey, this, yeah, no, no, you can't do that. There's no add method in here. You can't add anything to it because there's no add method in the file you call array list. So you don't want to do that. You want to call it something that's not, you don't want to call it the thing you're going to be importing. All right. So now that we've got this, okay, let's go ahead and write, not the first method, but do appearance. Give me a second. Oh, that didn't help at all. Settings. Presentation mode, font size. Let's up that font size to really nice and big. Okay, or, you know, just don't listen to me. Okay, view, appearance, exit pres presentation mode. View, maybe I just have to do it again. Okay, that's better. All right, so what we want to do here is we want to now, uh, let's go ahead and make the, uh, the is unique function. So public, static, um, this is going to return a Boolean, okay? And it's going to, and the name of it is is unique. It takes in an array list. Sorry, it takes in actually a list. We don't have to specify what kind of list. It takes in a list of, so actually I'm going to leave it blank for right now and just import the class. Yes, import Java from Java Util. Import, so list list and object. Oh, because that's what I have to do here. Now notice when I do create a list without any um, without any uh, generic type attached to it, okay? I get some I get a warning which says raw use of parameterized class E. It may be hard to see, but it says list E up there. It really expects you to use a generic type. You're going to get a warning if you don't use generics, and warnings just don't want them, okay? So the way we say this is that basically. We're saying this is a list of some types called E. And we want to, actually, we don't need to take in anything else for this one. I completely forgot the problem I was working on. Okay. And then we basically say over here, okay, public static, this holds a generic type. Anytime you see a generic in this method, you're telling the computer, hey, you see this? E isn't a type. Even if it exists as a type somewhere else, it's not a type here. Here it is representing some class that we're passing in, okay? And the computer's gonna go, okay. It's just some random type. You're gonna be tell, you're, I'll figure it out when you pass in your list. You pass me in a list of integers, E is gonna be integers. You pass me in a list of strings, E is gonna be strings. Make sense? It's gonna figure it out on uh, when, when you run it. Okay, and let's just go ahead and for here, I'm just gonna return true to quash the error. I always like to recross errors. Now, why am I returning true here? Because uh, with is unique, um, it's always easy for you when you're doing Booleans, 
it's always easier to try to disprove something. So either like assume it's true and then try to prove it false or assume it's false and try to prove it true depending on which how you want to do it, which is unique, right? You want to assume, hey, everything in here is unique because as soon as you find uh, a, a number in here or a letter or whatever type it is, and it's got a duplicate, you can just simply return false as soon as you find a duplicate and stop. Make sense? Whereas for assuming it's false, you'd have to do a lot more, you know, work and you'd have to count how, uh, you know, to make, you know, that to make sure that everything appeared only once. Um, and the code just gets a lot more unintuitive. Okay. So for the second problem, that is public static. And that all, and that is going to take, so this is, let's see, list of integer, okay, um, list of integer, all multiples, or whatever it was called, list of integers, and, and if you have a lot of questions here, uh, my videos will answer a lot of those questions. So, and int x. Okay. So over here, notice that it may be subtle, especially from, from on the screen, but this integer over here is in black text. And this E over here is in a kind of pale greenish bluish text. Okay. In other words, it's syntax highlighting them differently going to return null to quash the error right now. Obviously, you don't want to return null. Um, but this makes it so that we can kind of look over uh, look over what we're doing over here. So because I've pa I passed in a list of integers, what I can do here is I can assume that everything in here is an integer. So I can do, hey, it's out, you know, uh, print, you know, so print out list get zero to so get, and that's how you get index zero, whatever value stored there, plus list get one. So in other words, I can add those two things together, no problemo. Okay. But if I do this over here, which is what I see is a very common error. Don't do this. You'll see that this generates an error and you'll see that these now are the same, that this is the same color as this up here. What's saying here is that you've just declared integer to be a generic type, a placeholder for generic type, which means that integer doesn't exist anymore for the sake of this method. Integer just means some random class that you're passing in. It's the placeholder name for a random class that you're passing in which means that these are now essentially objects and you have no idea what kind of type they are, which is why you get an error. And you'll see that basically it, the, it says it cannot be applied to type integer and integer, which is very confusing, right? Because of course you can add integers together, but this is uh, not what's going on here. So for instance, if I, let's go ahead and actually see if it actually presents a different message. If I do one plus, Let's see if I do one plus new object. I'll get a cannot be cannot be applied to int Java. Okay, so yeah, you get the same kind of error that you'd normally get, but it's saying, hey, integer isn't a thing that exists. Uh, or rather is not a thing, adding integers is not a thing you can do, which of course you can do that. But it's because what you've done over here is you've told it that integer is a generic type. It's a placeholder name. So that's what this over here is between the static and the return type. It's creating a placeholder name. Okay. So if you're getting a weird error, that may be why. Okay. So you only use this placeholder name like E or whatever letter you want to use when you don't know what the type is, okay? So using this kind of as a baseline, this should be able to pick, you should be able to figure out at least how to construct the methods for the other ones. Yes? Yeah. 
yeah, sure. You could pass in an array list. List is just small, is just takes five less keystrokes. Now, the difference here is that uh, the difference, so the mechanical difference though, is that passing in a list, this method would be able to accept both array lists and linked lists, which are things we'll cover in module two, which is often what you want to do. You say, yeah, this, this doesn't, I don't care what kind of list I'm getting passed in, this will work with either type of list. Although sometimes you want to be specific and say, no, this method is for array lists only. Link lists uh, cannot use this. So, so you can totally do it as array lists if you want to. Um, I always get into the habit of making my things as generic as basically the most abstract type as possible. That's that's, and generally that's because the more abstract it is, the less keystrokes it requires. But, um, but. Um, it also means that you can use your uh, methods on more things. Other questions on this assignment? Because my plan today is to let you get started on this one, take demos for Fox and Rabbit if you still need uh, to demo that, as well as it take um, uh, give some advice on Fox and Rabbit if you still need help with that. So... Um, but otherwise, uh, just let you get started on this and see what questions you have. All right. So let me go ahead and get out of this. And stop share. All right. Yeah, you come here. Yeah. All right, so to manually, so let's go ahead and get you manually added. Let me go ahead.